Hello, movie mavens! Welcome to this week's episode of the Bee Movies channel. My name is Bailey, and I put the B in movies. Um, this week is a momentous occasion because this is the last full week of September, which we all know what that means. Means that we are so close to October. So close that I can taste it. I already have my costume planned out. I'm just, I'm so excited. And I know that I say this every single week, but just, I'm just so excited. We like, we always bring you good content here, but like, I think Elliot and I have outdone ourselves on some of the content we have coming up and I'm just excited. Um, just as a teaser on some things you can expect from the B-Movies blog in October, since it is my favorite time of the month. There are going to be a lot of pieces about popular franchises, a lot of recommendation lists, a lot of spotlights on feminist horror, which I'm excited about. There's some spotlights on queer horror. I'm just, I'm, I'm get ready. I'm so excited. Um, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's talk about this week on the B-Movies blog. So like I say, at the beginning of every episode, you can read all of these pieces over on our blog. It's just bmovies.blog. Um, it's also linked in the description box below. Also, I still don't know why my neon sign is not focusing. I've been trying. We're going to get it one of these days. I promise. There's going to be one day when you have, um, hopefully next month, because I'm going to really go hot and heavy on editing, that you'll have video clips. You'll have pictures and you'll have a focused bmovies neon sign one day. We can all dream. We can dream together. It's our collective dream. Uh, but <laughs> I digress. Uh, so this week on the B-Movies blog, we're talking about Catherine O'Hara. She's a gem. If you don't know Catherine O'Hara or you just got to know Catherine O'Hara through Schitt's Creek, I've got you covered. She's done so many things. She's probably done a lot of roles that you don't even relate her to. So I just thought she deserved a spotlight. Also, we're talking about Cam, which will be our deep dive today. I still think Cam is a super underrated horror movie. I think that it's a wonderful horror movie. I think it's um, a fascinating horror movie. And again, we'll dive into everything, but I just, I, I really enjoy this movie. Um, we're also talking about animatronic horror, animatronics gone awry, stuff like Willy's Wonderland, uh, the Banana Splits movie, which I love. I actually own the Banana Splits movie. Um, I, I love it. I really enjoy it. And also I love that Patrick Stump from Fall Out Boy did the music for it. Um, which if you don't know, he does the music for a lot of things that I just kind of forget about. He even did a lot of the music for Dead and Paranormal Park. He voices a character and he, if I'm not mistaken, wrote like most of the music for the musical episode of Dead and Paranormal Park. So just, I'm a huge Fall Out Boy fan. Love him. Um, just a little tidbit. Uh, we're talking about high school musicals as well. Speaking of music, there's this <laughs> weird decision like we made as a society a while ago <laughs> that setting musicals in high school is just something we do. There are, you know, there have been adaptations of even Heather's and um, Mean Girls. I know that there's going to be a Mean Girls like stage production of the musical at some point because Busy Phillips is going to be Regina George's mother, which is going to be so good. Very excited. Looking forward to that. But we go in depth about zombies, high school musical, Grease, and just, I'm, I don't understand. I'm glad that we made that decision. Don't understand when or how. So <laughs> we're going to talk about high school musicals, including high school musical, obviously. And finally this week, we're doing a spotlight on Christopher Guest. I love Christopher Guest movies. I was really late to the ball game on Christopher Guest. I didn't watch my first one until 2014 when my boss at Amy's, actually shout out Dave if you're watching this, I also mentioned you the piece. Um, Dave's one of the best bosses I've ever had. Quoted best in show and I didn't know what he was talking about. And he was like, you have to watch Christopher Guest. And so I binged all of his movies. Love him. So this week we just have some spotlights, um, talking about high school musicals, animatronics, and cam. I wanted this to be a little bit of a light week just because, again, next week 
when it comes to October, we're going to be hitting it hot and heavy. Just a reminder, we're going to be doing six pieces of content a week instead of five. We had so many ideas and built out the editorial calendar that, and it just so happened that we needed that extra day to be sure to make sure that you had the October that you all deserve and to kick off the first annual Halloween season with the B-Movies channel and the B-Movies blog. So, speaking of, it is time for your Bite Size Sunday teaser. And I also want to talk to you about how Bite Size Sundays are going to look in October. So, well, it just clicked with me. The first, it, what am I doing? The first Bite Size Sunday of October will be this Sunday. Girl, how does time work? So anyway, um, we, throughout October, for Bite Size Sunday, instead of one specific movie or show, we're actually going to do curated horror recommendation lists. So what that means is each week we'll have a theme, and instead of just one show or movie, we're going to have multiple. So there are going to be 10 movie recommendations for that theme. We already have the themes planned out. I'm super excited. Uh, Elliot and I got really, really enthusiastic about it. And this is actually, I want to give a shout out to my tattoo artist, Lita Lundy. They actually spurred this idea because they mentioned one of the themes we were going to do and said, you should do a piece about this. And that's what spurred this whole idea. So shout out to Lito. Uh, they're great at Tattoos by Lito. I'll link their Instagram just so that you can see their work. They do most of, they've done most of my arm. They, they are my regular artist now. And I would definitely recommend them if you, if you're looking for a tattoo. So with that introduction, the teaser for this week's theme is Shania Twain would approve. And some of you are probably like, what on earth does that mean? It will make sense. And as another hint, there's a reason Cam is our deep dive this week. So get excited because you're not just getting one recommendation. You're getting 10 for the whole month of October. Every Bite Size Sunday will be 10. But in the same vein as the regular Bite Size Sunday, these will not live on the blog. These will only be on Instagram. So be sure you're following us over on Instagram at BBB's channel. Same as our YouTube. So... Uh, just to recap this week, Catherine O'Hara, Christopher Guest, Cam, Animatronics High School Musicals, all over on bmovies.blog. Everything is in the description box below, as always. So now let's dive into Cam. So Cam is a 2018 film. It is directed by Daniel uh, Goldhabert, and it was written by Issa Mazai, is how I believe you say her name. It might be Mazai. I apologize. When I tried to look up the pronunciation, it was back and forth. So, Issa Maze is how we're going to say it. If it's incorrect, I apologize. I think you're a wonderful writer. I'm so sorry. But Cam stars Madeline Brewer, who plays Alice, who is a an enthusiastic Cam girl who is striving to rise through the ranks to be in one of the top ten spots, if not the number one spot, on the website she works through. And it's based off of Issa Maze was actually a sex worker and cam girl. And so she wrote it with her experiences in mind. And so one of the reasons I really like cam is it's not only sex positive, but it's also sex worker positive. Throughout this film, Alice is not used as like a titular character. She, it's not, overtly sexual everything has a meaning behind it it's not gratuitous it's and there are times in it when she is doing things and it's clear she is uncomfortable or unhappy she's not here for the male gaze or for our pleasure and so I that's why I really enjoy cam is because it's this fresh take on and it's it's a more accurate I, I'm not I've never been a sex worker I I couldn't tell you 
But from my perspective as a movie goer who has seen plenty of horror movies where women are <laughs> simply used as sex objects, I can tell you from that perspective that it is refreshing. And that's why I really enjoy this film. And it's also just a really good horror movie. Um, it's like, I like to think of it, it's like Black Mirror, Black when Black Mirror was really good in the first couple seasons. Um, I think that the new season of Black Mirror, I think Demon 79, and there are a couple really good ones in there. But, um, I think it's very hit or miss now, but this reminds me of back in the time when, um, Black Mirror was actually, like, consistently good. So, um, that's a little, before we dive into the context, that's a little, mm, I guess, teaser to kind of prep you. Um, I should also say, theoretically, I don't think there are really any content warnings or trigger warnings per se. This movie obviously is about sex work. So it may be better for a more mature audience. And by that I mean, I don't know if a 13 year old horror movie goer is the correct audience. So that's one thing I would bear in mind. I do think this would be more of a rated R, so on and so forth. So I will say that because I know sometimes as a kid, when I was younger, you know, we would watch some horror movies and my mom would fast forward through parts, cover my eyes. But I think just with the subject matter, regardless, for an older audience, I think they understand Alice's perspective more as well. So I do think just because of the content and just because of the, like the message behind it, I will say I think that this is intended more so for an older audience just because when this came out, you know, when this came out five years ago, I would have been like 26. And I think that's why I liked it so much is because I was, you know, a woman, I was in my mid to late twenties. And there are a lot of things just from, excuse me, being a woman within the world that I appreciated a lot more than I think I would have, even if I was like in early college and watched it. So with all the particulars out of the way, let's dive into camp. So Cam starts with what we initially believe to be a regular, straightforward slasher scene, wherein Alice is on her cam. She's talking to people on her feed. She is stabbed. And I believe, she, I can't remember, I'm like, now I'm second guessing myself. She's either stabbed or she has her throat cut, I don't remember. But it seems like a very straightforward, just like slasher, over the top, sensual scene. And it turns out this is just one of her videos that she has directed this. So, she, so right from the beginning, we're subverting that expectation. Because Alice is fully in control of this situation. She's not being chased by some sort of horror villain. She's not you know, being attacked by men. She's fully in control at this point. So then we learn Alice has some regular men that she interacts with. We kind of go through the list of characters because these will come back later. And we learn that Alice is an aspiring, I don't know if I would say an aspiring sex worker, but this is what she really wants to make her career. And so She's trying to work her way up through the ranks and beat some of the other streamers that she just can't seem to beat. But her life is actually a secret from her mom. And so we learn quickly that Alice's mother does not know what she does for a living and that Alice is keeping this part of her life secret. And that she's very, again, she's very close with her mom, but her mom doesn't know about this part of her life. So later on, Alice goes online to find that she's somehow streaming 
but it's not her. It looks just like her, and they sound just like her, but it's not her. And so she reaches out to the website that she works with. They are having issues verifying her identity. They are unsure what's happening. And so she's perplexed, thinks of it as maybe a glitch, moves on. And so later on, um, Alice is going to do a stream with another sex worker um, who, who does cam work. And she rides this giant thing that I can't say on YouTube, but you can probably catch my drift. We'll just call it, we'll just say she goes for a bull ride. And it's clear she's very uncomfortable and it's very painful, but she just is, she wants that spot so badly. And she's collaborating with a very well-known cam girl. So, Alice then notices that she's streaming again and it's not her and so she is still trying to figure out what's going on and eventually videos of her doing cam work are sent around and her brother's friends find them and that's how her mother finds out what Alice does. And it's at her brother's birthday party. It's a mess. And so not only now has Alice been exposed, literally exposed, to her mother. But now there seems to be this imposter who's pretending to be her. So Alice then starts trying to reach out to the men that she's worked with, that she's familiar with, that she, I don't know, forgive me, I'm, I don't, I'm not as familiar with sex work, I'm not sure what the proper term would be, but it, it's the men that she interacts with. She starts reaching out to them for help. And of course, they exploit her. They're not really helpful. And one even, it gets violent with one of the men at a restaurant because Alice then goes on live again and he believes her to be blowing him off and he gets aggressive and she has to escape. So on, so Alice is then seen streaming with another, like the number one or number two, like biggest streamer. And it seems like Alice is streaming like, I can't remember if it's from the other streamer's bedroom or her bedroom, but it's like somewhat like her bedroom at home. Yeah. And it, it's, it's crazy. And so Alice is like beside herself at this point because she doesn't know who this person is. It looks just like her. This person is interacting with other people. She's interacting with um, Alice's clients. Forgive me if that's not the right term. And... She's just reached a breaking point. And then the gentleman who got violent with Alice tells her that he's actually interacted with the streamer that she was streaming with. But when Alice dives a little deeper, it turns out the streamer that Alice was in the video with passed away so there was someone in a video with Alice's doppelganger who passed away <laughs> so <laughs> at this point I mean I would be y'all I don't know what I would do if if you were watching yourself Someone who looked just like you, doing what you do, interacting with the people you interact with? That's insane. It makes me think of, not to, not to shift gears before the finale, but there is, oh man, I wish I could think of what the name of it was. There's this 
I don't have to look it up. There's this, I think it's a George R.R. R. Tolkien short story. And it freaked me out ever since I read it. And let me see. I'm so professional Googling on camera. Whatever. Whatever. Oh my gosh. I'm just like, I'm, I'm truly, this is going to drive me nuts. What is it called? Okay, hang on. This is, I, I may call it Pudge in here to do a soft, a soft shoe for you guys while I try to find it. Oh my gosh. Doppel. Why can't I think of this? Okay, I can't find it and <laughs> what I'm trying to Google is like not helpful at all. Um, but there's a short story and if I think when I find the name I will link it below. But it's a short story, it's about this girl, and she's a painter. And she, this really strange little man moves in to her complex. And she starts dreaming about this guy. And like, he always carries around like a suitcase full of cheese doodles. And so then she starts craving cheese doodles and she starts drawing this man. And he's not, he's like, by the way he's described in the book, it's almost like Uncanny Valley. Just like a little short, kind of weird looking Uncanny Valley dude. And she starts like putting him into her paintings and things. And she just like can't shake this feeling. And one day she goes over there and, spoiler alert, I'll give you a minute. A uh, Spoiler alert, she goes over there. And it turns out he is, I guess, I wouldn't say a, as Louis Lane would say, a flesh pedestrian, but he's almost like a shapeshifter. And so basically once he sinks his hooks into you, you switch bodies with him. So then this girl becomes him and he walks out as her. And like she just starts losing her memory and that like stuff like that just, ugh, it's so, ugh, it just makes your skin crawl to think about and so I just, I can't imagine being in Alice's position, like not only are you watching someone who's you have all of these interactions you do, but then they're rising through the ranks and they're achieving the things that you wanted, but it's not you. And that whole idea is just crazy to me to think about. And I think that's why this movie sticks with me so much is because it's just, it's just nutty to think about just having someone that looks exactly like you and people think is you and you can't do anything about it so it's like being helpless and just having no control so that's to lead us into the finale those are my thoughts and i probably just made this movie more terrifying for everyone and i'm sorry but those are just my real thoughts so alice finally at her wit's end you know she's tried to you know tried to through the company she's tried to through these men she interacts with at this point you know like she's been um against her consent exposed to her mother you know her brother's friends now and so she logs in she makes a, a, a burner account she logs in and she is her doppelganger is playing like truth or dare and just like some you know some games in that vein with the audience so um alice they keep upping the stakes like alice winds up breaking her own nose and it's by slamming her head very i don't know why 
I don't know. This is another. I don't know why we as a society would like hereditary and talk to me and KM. We decided slamming faces, but I'm like to just think about busting your own nose. Ooh, excuse me, the willies. But she wants to break your own nose, and it just escalates and escalates, and finally, Alice gets the person, the person to delete the account. So Alice's account is just gone because she no longer has control. It's clear this is some sort of demented AI that may or may not be controlled by the website that she works through. And so the, her account is finally deleted. And so we end Cam with Alice actually working with her mother, her mother helping her get styled to start her whole new channel and start again from the bottom to rise back up on her own and hopefully not encounter any more AIs. So that's Cam. I really, really love this movie and I it's something I recommend. And what I love about this movie is when people ask me to compare it to another movie, I really can't. It's kind of like Black Mirror, but there are not a lot of movies I can compare it to. And for me, that's the number one sign of a good movie or even a great movie is when you sit there and you're like, it's kind of like this, but I'm like, I can't even think of a movie to compare it to. And I also think that it, it really speaks volumes about not only parasocial relationships, but just how women are treated, how women who do sex work are treated, and how women are seen as objects. And I, that's why a lot of these men believe she's been replaced, that she hasn't been replaced by this AI. They just think this is her because they can't understand that she's a complex woman because to them she only exists on this screen and even though some of them talk to her and interact with her outside of the streams she's still just a woman in a screen and if you aren't aware of how our society treats women and thinks of women i've got news for you but it's not great <laughs> and so to me, I just think, even though I can't speak to the sex work side, obviously, but just as a woman, I'm like, yeah, there are so many times I haven't been believed or I have been made to feel crazy when I'm not. And even if not to use crazy in a derogatory term, but like made to feel like I am seriously misremembering something or my behavior is the issue and it's not and I think that that's why this movie means so much to me is that as a woman I can't speak to the sex work part but I can speak to the being a woman part and not being believed and being seen as an object or being treated as an object or only being seen as there to be literally viewed for men's entertainment I get it I get it so um, this movie is, and I would also like to just clarify for anyone, when I say women, I mean trans women as well, included in this. Like, please know whenever I say women, I mean trans women as well. Trans women and non-binary femme presenting women, whoever is included in that group, that's what I mean. I don't mean, like, please know I'm not just talking about cis women, I'm talking about trans women, I'm talking about non-binary folks who are femme presenting anyone in that category knows how this feels and so I just I think this is a wonderful film it's deceivingly heavy when you really get into the complexities of it and I think that probably for some people they saw the trailer and just saw it as a surface level horror movie, but there's a lot more to Cam, and I highly recommend you check this out. Um, because also, um, Daniel, uh, Daniel Goldhabert, who directed it, also directed How to Blow Up a Timeline, or How to Blow Up a Pipeline. <laughs> My brain, whoo. Um, and so he, he's doing great stuff. Um, I haven't read Issa Maze's book, but I really would like to. It's called Cam Girl, um, so I'll definitely check that out. 
but yeah so i think that that is going to do us for the cam recap um be sure to look out for bite size sunday this sunday i'm so excited uh to get those started to get those recommendations started uh be sure to follow me on instagram at lisa underscore frankenstein underscore be sure to follow elliot over on instagram i know y'all don't see elliot on camera but like elliot works so hard to edit all of the pieces for the B Movies blog. Um, Elliot is fully my creative collaborator, creative producer, you name it. So like, please know just because you don't see Elliot on camera, Elliot does so much work behind the scenes. Uh, and please be sure to follow her over on reading.with.red, which is her bookstagram. Uh, it's, it's awesome. She has a lot of really good recommendations over there. Be sure to follow us on Instagram if you aren't, just at B Movies Channel, same as our, uh, same as our YouTube. And I will link the name of that short story below if I can find it because it has stuck with me ever since I saw it on a BuzzFeed listicle years ago. And I want all of you to share in the same misery that I do of thinking twice before talking to any human being alive. So <laughs> with all of that out of the way. I think all that's left to do is fade to black.